Hello, this video is an introduction to the geometric series. What is the geometric series? It's one in which each term is obtained from the preceding one by multiplying it by a common ratio. We call that common ratio R. Here's a generic geometric series. We call the first term A, and then the next term is obtained from that term by multiplying it by R. So we have AR. The next term is obtained from that term by multiplying by R. So we have AR squared and AR cubed. In general, the symbol for the nth term is AR to the N minus 1. You see, when we're at the first term, there is no R. When we're at the second term, R's exponent is 1. When we're at the third term, R's exponent is 2. So the exponent on R is one less than the, the term you're at. So if we start this at one generically, this is what one way to represent a generic geometric series. Now we have to know when does it converge and when does it diverge? This video is to help you understand that process and to let you know that when it converges, we even know what it converges to. All right, let's take a look at some simple cases. What about when R equals one? Okay, so you're multiplying by one each time. That means you have A and A and A and A. Now, a series will converge if the series, if the sequence of partial sums, the limit on that converges. Well, if you stop after n terms, that's n copies of a that you're adding up. So what you have is n a, and as n goes to infinity on the function n a, that's gonna go off to infinity. It'll diverge when r equals one. What about when r equals negative one? So then what happens is each term is obtained from the other one by multiplying by negative one. So you start with a and you have negative a. You start with, and then from there you have an a and negative a. And it just alternates back and forth forever. You take the nth partial sum, you don't know exactly where you're at on the sequence. So you generically write it as negative one to the n minus one. But as n goes to infinity, um, then we don't know if that's going to be a, that's going to be negative, uh, that's going to be uh, infinity or negative, I mean, I'm sorry, a or negative a. Um, basically, uh, it'll be a for odd, um, and, um, you know, some, some, for some terms, it'll be, uh, it depends on what n is as you go to infinity, but as n goes to infinity, there's no parity, there's no odd or evenness to infinity. What happens is the, the limit does not exist when the partial sum sequence, um, has a, infinite limit or a limit that does not exist, the series will diverge. So for one and for negative one, it diverges. Now we need to consider all other values of R. This is a standard uh, proof that's done in, um, in most textbooks. Um, it's not my original thought or anything like that, but I want you to see it so you can know when will the geometric series converge? When will it divert? What, what values of R make it divert? Like, why is it the case that it converges for certain values of R? And why is it the case that it diverges for other values of R? And so here's how we're going to do that. Whether it converges or diverges is based off of this capital S sub N, which is your partial sum, stopping after N terms. And so we had, we had seen it before that um, the first term is a, then ar, then ar squared, and ar cubed. The nth term is ar to the n minus 1. What we're going to do with that is factor out the a. They all have an a in common, so we factor out the a. And we're left with 1 plus r plus r squared and r cubed, all the way up to the last term, who is r to the n minus 1. Okay, so that's s sub n. Now we're going to take that exact same s sub n and multiply it by r. I'm sorry, negative r. So instead of a, we have negative ar. Instead of ar, we have negative ar squared. Instead of ar squared, we have negative ar cubed, and so on. Factor out a negative a from all of those terms. You'll be left with an r and an r squared and an r cubed, and the last term will be an r to the n. What we're going to do with these two lines, basically, is we're going to add these two together. So on the left-hand side of the equals, we'll have s sub n minus r s sub n. 
And then watch what happens on the right hand side. We get a lot of cancellation. You see, we have AR, then we have minus AR. We have AR squared, then we have minus AR squared. AR cubed, then minus AR cubed, and so on. Even this R to the N minus one, that's the last one that cancels. I don't have it written on the second line, but the term right before R to the N is R to the N minus one. So who survives? What's left over? Well, what's left over is the, the one from the first term line, first line of the first term, and the R sub N from the the last line of the second term. Um, let me just, in the same kind of highlighter, uh, the term that's right before this is the r to the n minus one. That guy, that guy um, cancels out. So we have this statement then that r, uh, s sub n minus r s sub n is equal to a times the quantity of one minus r to the n. This is never something that we would ask you to do, but we just need you to see why the geometric series be behaves how it does. Okay, so we're going to factor out the s sub n and divide by the 1 minus r, and we have an expression now that represents the nth partial sum. Why are we doing this? Why do we care? Well, if there is a sum, the sum is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity on s sub n. And so, if this limit exists, then that's going to be what your sum is. If this limit doesn't exist, if this limit is infinite, then um, the series will diverge. But if this limit exists, the series will converge, and we know what the sum of the series is. Okay, so we have the limit as n goes to infinity of a times the quantity of 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Okay, and the only action is happening on that r to the n term. Um, in section 10.1, you learned about sequences. And this should have been one of the things that you learned about sequences. R is a number. And based on the value of R, we can know whether or not this limit exists. We can even know what the limit is um, based on certain values of R. Um, what, we, what, we, um, what we know from section 10.1 is that if you're between minus 1 and 1, think of a fraction between minus 1 and 1, say a half or even negative a third. And you keep raising that to successive powers of n. It's going to get smaller and smaller. So when you're between minus one and one, it's going to go to zero. But when you're, but when you're uh, somewhere bigger than one, like a seven, you keep raising higher powers of seven. That's going to go off to infinity or negative seven. And so um, if you're between uh, minus one and one, you're going to converge to zero. This this limit's going to be zero, and the limit's going to be one if you're equal to one, if r is equal to one. Okay, it's going to be undefined if R is on the negative side, because as you go to infinity, you don't know about whether you're going to be, you know, positive or negative. There's no parity there, and it's going to be infinite as as um, if R is on the positive side of one. So basically, if there was a number line here, we'd have um, minus one and one. Um, in between there, we would have convergence to zero for this limit, um, and then we would have divergence, basically. Um, for numbers that are bigger than one and for numbers that are smaller than minus one and including minus one. Um, and so now we know what this limit is. And so for us to end up with a, a limit as n goes to infinity on s sub n being something that is a finite number, what needs to happen then is we need for that to go to zero. Okay, we already know that it diverges when r is equal to 1. Uh, we know it diverges when r is equal to negative 1. And all of these, it would diverge for. So these are the only ones that has a chance to converge for. And what does it converge to? Well, if that part goes to 0, then you're just looking at a over 1 minus r. So long as you're, you know, in between minus 1 and 1 for r. Now remember, this is what the sum is. The, the actual sum is equal to this value. This is what the sum of the geometric series is. What does A mean? A is the first term. What is R? R is the ratio, that common ratio amongst the terms. Sorry about my handwriting. There we go. 
And so when you're between minus one and one, a fancy way to say that is when your absolute value is less than one, we get convergence. The geometric series will converge if you're between minus one and one for your ratio, and we know what it converges to. It converges to the sum of a over one minus r. But anywhere outside of that, anywhere where your r value is, um, now I'm gonna change this to be um, what the series converges to. The geometric series converges to a sum who is a over one minus r for those guys in between there, and it diverges both for one and minus one, and for anything outside of that absolute value being less than one. The geometric series diverges for all other values of R. Okay, so that's just a short video just explaining uh, what a geometric series is uh, and um, when to know whether it converges or diverges. In the next series of videos, we'll look at maybe three or four different examples of geometric series. Some that converge, some that diverge, and um, yeah, that'll be it. All right, thanks.